Jawad Williams, Paul Davis. And the jump goes to Michigan State. Here's that matchup. Felton and Neitzel. Straight man-to-man -man by North Carolina. This Neitzel kid in the tournament, three-to-one ratio, assist to turnovers. Been very steady, moving down the stretch in that double overtime win against Kentucky last Sunday. Anderson, he'll drive in. No whistle. He thought he was fouled, and Jawad Williams comes out muscling with it. McCants quickly to May. Turn around. Didn't have the ball in his hands on that shot, Jim. Fine catch. Probably should have brought it back out. What kind of pace are we going to see here tonight? Oh, I think this is going to be a much faster pace than we saw in the first game. Nice speed inside. Anderson gives it over to Ager, and he is fouled on the way up. Well, the Spartans. Again, out of the Austin Regional through Old Dominion in the top one. Vermont, the Syracuse killer. And then the one and the two. They beat Duke for the first time for Tom Izzo. And they beat Kentucky in the most memorable, well, one of the most memorable games of this tournament. Illinois and Arizona, Michigan State and Kentucky. There have been a number of them. And our uh, fans voted earlier. Wake Forest and West Virginia is the best of the lot so far. First one goes for Ager. Ager had... A good outing against Vermont with 19 points, 7 for 13, and then came back with 21 big ones against Kentucky. Well, May was the one who fouled him, so a quick one on the Carolina center. And remember, Sheldon Williams for North Carolina, I mean for Duke, fouled out against this Michigan State just a week ago. Posting up is Williams. Jawad puts it up off the glass. He has struggled of late with his shot, but that was a hard earn too. There's Hager getting down the court, beating Lynch. Beating Manuel down the floor. Good job by Michigan State to push it before North Carolina was ready to be back on defense. And Manuel called for the block foul. That is something we saw often last week in both the Duke and then the Kentucky matchup for Michigan State. They get it out quickly, and Ager and Shannon Brown can fly. And they can finish, too, Jim. That's why they're fearless when they go down the court. If you're nice, so you don't mind getting the ball. They'll take it to the basket. Davis, that pass deflected. McCann's got a hand on it. He's up ahead. Neitzel trying to defend with the left hand. McCants was losing control of it. Just put oh, it up. Oh, Look oh. at Felton rolling to pick up the rock. Well, McCants has got his shoelaces untied. And he better be careful because he could trip out there. He was, in a, he was in a knot right there into that Michigan State defense. And there's Ager again flying into that basket. How about this pace? Neitzel coming off the screen, set by Davis, hits the jumper. But this is the pace I think that North Carolina would rather have than with Michigan State going this fast up and down the floor. You're talking about North Carolina, the highest scoring team in the land this year. 31 and 4 in the Tar Heels. Neitzel giving up a lot of size right here on that matchup. Out to the corner with the three. Jawad off with that one and comes out the Neitzel. Neitzel does a good job keeping the ball on the floor. He's an excellent dribbler. Early on, though, this season, he was dribbling and not going anywhere. Now he understands how to get that ball in a good active position. Brandon Brown with the ball, the most outstanding player of the Austin Regional. Bank, no. Tipped around, out to May. May, the leading rebounder in this tournament through four games. That was some hands by me, and then have the presence of mind. There's a bad pass. May not in position. Well, the Carolina road to St. Louis through Oakland, Iowa State, Villanova, one point heart stopper, and then Wisconsin by six. Well, they took out the third place team in the Big Ten in the regional final as Chris Hill comes in for Michigan State, the senior. And Marvin Williams and Scott in for North Carolina. So I think both coaches realizing they do have deep benches. They're going to go to that bench early because the pace of this game is the kind of thing that you're not going to be playing any 40 minutes out here. Well, the formula is set, Billy. This is a team, North Carolina, to beat the three team out of the Big Ten in the regional final, taking on the second place team today. If they win, they'll take on the first place team on Monday night. Three straight. And Davis, follow up, Trent. Foul again on Carolina, and it's going to be on Felton. And there's Trannon. That's a great trade-off if you're Michigan State. Trannon goes after a rebound. Felton, who's a tremendous leaper, but not strong enough to go up there with Trannon. And that is the kind of foul that 
Roy Williams did not want to see on his guard. Normally felt with that leaping ability, you'll just take it away from somebody up there. But Trenton is so strong. We talked about him, Jim, as a football player and a receiver. Really went up there well for that ball. Good touch as well, Trenton. He was uh, more highly recruited as a basketball player than football. But uh, another two-sport star at Michigan State. Only shooting 52% from the line, but you, you, know, know it. you know why? Football muscles take a while to get down into basketball muscles, and I think his stroke now much smoother than it was earlier in the year. Saw that in Austin also, so yep. he hits two. And this Michigan State, a great free throw shooting team from top to bottom. Felton way outside, and Davis has the rebound. Nice block out by Davis. Here goes Ager. Dan for the block. And Felton could defend him because he's been told not to get in foul trouble. Michigan State doing a great job pushing that ball. May has it batted loose. That was Hill coming in to help out. And Torbert comes away with it. His first action, the senior. Hill. And Davis thought about putting it up, but May closed in on him. Turn around instead. Too strong. And they hammer May. But see, Trannon is a guy who can afford to go in there and get four or five fouls. Terrific dunk on the inside. You see Felton gave up on the play. Trannon called for that one. He knows it. Well, when you when you start talking about Torbert and Brown and Ager and Anderson, you talk about guys that can finish on the break. Anderson right back in. Boy, was he clutch down the stretch. Hitting four free throws in the last 12 seconds of the second overtime to put that one away as Davis sits down. It's interesting here. Brown on Felton right now. Brown, a good enough athlete to stay with him. He's got plenty of size. Screen inside trying to get Williams open. And it's Marvin Williams. Jawad is sitting down. McCants working on Hill. Step back. Nope. Yep. Oh. Get right off the front of the rim. That well, shooter's touch that he has. What you like to see about McCants, he's certainly back to 100% now. Was out with that intestinal disorder, but he wants the ball today, and he's really taking it to the basket. Good sign for North Carolina. Brandon on some screen. Brown. Another good screen. Brown floater. Tipped around, and Carolina, I believe, touched it last. I mean, two overtime. Two, three overtime games North Carolina played. The first one in that Final Four against this very Michigan State team. Great Johnny Green in that ball game. Imagine winning three overtime games, and that's when the games were played back to back. No day in between. Yep. Carolina beat them 74-70 in triple overtime, and then only able to turn right around and do it again against Will Chamberlain in Kansas in the final over in Kansas City, Missouri. Anderson into the paint. And May trying to influence that, and he does. He did. Good job by May. Felt bouncing it over, and a hand in there by Michigan State. And so far, North Carolina has misjudged the athleticism and quickness of Michigan State. Spartan ball. Got to point out, North Carolina Jim has faced a 16 seed, a 9, a 5, a 6, and a 5. So they haven't faced any of those 1, 2, 3s. Obviously, they couldn't face a 1 in their own region, but... They have not faced the 2-3-4 type team so far, and Michigan State right now is showing a little bit more athletic than what maybe North Carolina has seen. Into Davis. Marvin Williams defending, and Davis able to get the hoop. Good job by Michigan State to go inside to the big man who is coming on really, really strong. Great game against Duke. David Noel has checked in for the heels for the 34, and it remains North Carolina ball. What do you see here in the early action with both teams on the floor, your early indicator? My early indicator is that Michigan State's playing much stronger, particularly off the boards, and they look much quicker going to the basket. Great man-to-man, -man. Hill now on Felton. Staying off Felton. Looks like he wants to give Felton a shot. Felton was a good shooter. Long, and they're able to get it with McCants. Felton and McCants. Over, screen from behind, and right over the top. McCants only six foot four, but can really stop. Felton's got to be careful. The hand checks out front. Little pick and roll action. Down low, Davis. Block. Block from behind by McCants. Felton, look at that pass. No 
Puts it down. Now, there's the first time that North Carolina really got off on that break that they're so patented with, and that's why they're the number one scoring team in the country. When they can go that full 94 feet, they're really effective. Love the pass by Felton. Davis, baseline, short this time. Miss Marvin Williams. Hits ahead. Felton would like to push that ball again, and here he comes. Trying to squeeze it in there to Jawad Williams and Davis. Intercepts. Up ahead to Torbert. Lob on this end, and it doesn't go. Underneath, Anderson. No whistle. This time there is one. And it's on the Spartans. Look out. Look out. A little uh, heated exchange here. And a freshman getting a little hot inside. Look at the pass, the bounce pass. Just fired in there absolutely on the mark. Two things you need here, Jim. You need a good pass, but you need a guy that knows how to catch a ball as well. Noel was an outstanding pass receiver, football player. And here you see McCants going way up above everybody right behind the defense. So far, May has not been a factor in this ball game. Let's see if North Carolina now in the half court set starts to get the ball to the man that's been their horse. Knightsel back in, Torbert out for Michigan State. Of course, the common thing in those two highlights was Felton. And there's May, good job by Davis again. You notice how every time Hager and Brown get the ball on the wing, they get ready to turn that corner. Davis steps in, dumps it over, Tranan. And that one's read by the Tar Heel defense. Melvin Scott's first action. Jawad Williams hits the top of the three, top good, of the key three. Good job. He had Davis on the outside. He knew he really couldn't handle him out there. Davis looking like he's got a lot. I mean, Williams looking like he's got a lot of confidence, Jim, and he's been not shooting well in this tournament so far. Ager, too strong, had the open look, but it's Davis. Ager with the lay-in, too strong. I'll tell you, Davis in this tournament with offensive rebounds, but unable to get a conversion. Williams not a second time. That was a good job by Tran and came out and got a little piece of that ball at the right time. Lob high, Ager, beautiful, lays it in. <laughs> we see guys on both ends of the floor that can the ball go above that rim. Trannon with his second, got him with the shoulder. And there's Luther Head, what a second half he had. You know, that game was 50 to 49 with 10 minutes to play, and Illinois closed at 22 to 8. And I'll tell you something else Darren Williams did. He scored the first basket of the game in the opening seconds. He scored the last basket of the game in the closing seconds, and no hoops in between, but nine assists and controlled the floor. McCants right back to May with this interior passing. It leads to Williams climbing the rim. Boy, you love big guys that have great hands, and May knew exactly how to deliver. Williams off to a very good start, Jim, and that spells good things for Roy Williams because he has played without any confidence here the last couple of weeks. He already has seven points. Melvin Scott mixing it up, and they call it on Neitzel. So Melvin Scott forces it back for the Tar Heels. And there is Gerard Williams with a good dunk. Look at those hands by May. Good anticipation that his teammate would be open inside. Rod Williams will sit down. He has really played well so far. And he'll get his namesake, Martin Williams, coming right in behind him. Not much ball off there. You know, he hit that three, Jawad Williams. He was 0 for 7 from 3 in the last three games. So he certainly has the feeling going here in the early action. Sean May trying to back in and comes up short on a half hook as Drew Namick was defending. He's come in for the first time for State, number 34. So far, May has not gotten anything to fall, but that time he used that upper body of his so well to create some space to get that shot off. Marvin Williams called for his first. Felton returns to the floor. See a lot of movement with both benches today, Jim, and we expected that because they're both extremely deep. One thing we've seen here today in that first game, the Michigan State fan fans were cheering on Illinois and they're now getting the return as that one rattles out for Ager. There's a Big Ten fan sticking together here in St. Louis. Good and, job for the yep. weak side. And look at Knightson. They get ahead. Brown lays it in. Great job by Brown. Anticipation from the weak side. I think they think that May can really score here. And, and they got 
Good job by May on the inside and good job by North Carolina to recognize it. Jim, let me put something in perspective in regard to what May is doing in this tournament. He leads in both scoring and rebounding in the tournament. The last guy to do that was Danny Manning at 88. Other guys that have done that, Cornbread Maxwell, Elvin Hayes, Jerry Chambers, Bill Bradley, my partner, Len Chappell, Jerry West. Can you imagine Jerry West leading the, the, the tournament in rebounding and that? scoring? Amazing, isn't it? Six foot four, known as a guard. Back in those days, he could jump center and play anywhere he wanted to. You know, that shows the company that that Sean May is keeping these days is Torbert is back out, so is Jawad Williams, and you can get complete Final Four coverage only at CBSSportsLine.com. And you know, Jim, out of all those guys I mentioned, you know one thing uh, that's really strange? Only one guy played on the championship team out of that group, and that was Danny Manning. The only guy. And isn't it amazing, like, Kareem never led the tournament in scoring and rebounding. Bill Walton never led the tournament scoring and rebounding. Of course, they won the championship. Yeah, they got the championships. <laughs> Sits. Good screen by Davis. Yep. Davis is back in. By Hager with another dunk. Well, Hager and Brown have really ripped off coming off of those corners. Felton quickly up ahead. The Kansas corner. Yes. Well, right now, you don't see an indication that either team has somebody that's coming up cold like Garcia was in the first ball game. Key players are making big shots. McCants with nine. Talking about key players. Hands on Torbert. Torbert's going to take him baseline. That's Davis. He can fire it from out there, but this one doesn't drop. And it's Jawad Williams playing big. Davis reach around and able to get it over oh. to Neitzel. It's a foul that time, and Neitzel gets away. Neitzel jumper front of the rim, and again, Jawad Williams clears. Felt the spin move. Lost control of it back to state. Jawad Williams had McCants wide open, but didn't see him before he threw it out. Felt not having a real good ball handling game for him. Name it back. Anderson out. Melvin Scott for Carolina checks in. And Bo Gracchus for Michigan State, a fifth-year senior, is coming on the floor. He's the only one of the Final Four squads who had ever actually been on a Final Four floor. He was a redshirt. Back in 2001, when Michigan State made it to the uh, Final Four, but he did not play again. Redshirt. Hill, three shot here. Yep. And it's going to be on Carolina over the back. And hold right. on, Jawad Williams. Hey, Jim, right now, taking a look at Felton. He's had, obviously, a great, great career at North Carolina, led the ACC in assists, but he had two games this year where he had eight turnovers. One, that game that they lost in Durham, and one against Georgia Tech. He's got to protect the ball much better than he's done so far in this first half. And I said that was a big shot for Hill before, because this is another guy that needs to gain some confidence if he's going to be productive from the outside. Torbett over Manuel. Good short range jump shooter. May with the great hands again up ahead to Scott. Step into the basket, Felton. Davis. Davis closed in on him. Not a good decision by Felton to put that shot up, knowing that the shot blocker was late waiting on him. You see Felton coming in, he beats one man, but he has to know Davis is waiting to get a piece. That's Manuel reaching in for his second. On a play like that, Jim, it would have been good for Felton to keep that dribble alive, go right under, come back out the other side, and probably would have had a play. Shuttling in other players now. David Noel back for North Carolina. And for the first time, Quinton Thomas, the freshman point guard, as Felton is taken out. All 20 of the Carolina points have come from frontline players. Nothing out of the backcourt. Counting McCants as a frontline player. That's Torbert again. All Michigan State with that rebound. Davis is taking some of those short jumpers, tries to get and hits it. Another push inside. I count the basket. Is that going to be Torbert? Haven't seen an indication who the foul's on. It might have been Torbert. It's actually no, it's... Melvin Scott of North Carolina. How about that? So the basket counts and State gets possession. Well, hold on, that's a one-on-one. That's the seventh on North Carolina, so that'll send State to the line, Torbert to the line. And any time you send this team to the line, you're sending just great production. Here you see the shot, push on the inside, and it was.
Just a push by the arm underneath the basket. One and one for Torbert. Torbert, the number two free throw shooter in the Big Ten. So you have Anderson, I mentioned this last week. Anderson, the number one foul shooter in the Big Ten. Torbert, number two. Shannon Brown, number three. And Maurice Ager, number five. So some lineup, no matter where you go, you put Michigan State on the line, you're in some trouble. Looking for a clarification over on the side with that last free throw by Torbett. I'm going to go back to the Kentucky game. They've now hit 16 straight free throws. They hit the big ones in that important second overtime. Well, Jim, on the year, I think they think Bokraka should have been the free throw shooter. Did you see him get pushed out by Scott? The foul was on Scott. And Scott was not, and Torbett wasn't anywhere near it. Watch. Let's take a look. Watch Bokraka's oh, right there. Underneath. Absolutely, absolutely. Torbett, and that's why I thought. The foul was called on Torbett because it, it, that's the that's the area, and they they're going to take the point yeah. off the board. This is a correctable error. Right, the wrong man. Now here here's Bogracus who's actually over on the bench. He was taken out of the game. So Torbert gets off the line. He shot for the wrong shooter. Bogracus will come back into the ball game. Now let's look at the trade off right there. Bogracus is a 69% free throw shooter. It's only taken 13 free throws on the year. So Bogracus will face the one and one. They took the point away, back down to 20 to 18. And the biggest shots this man ever made in his life is that three-pointer that beat Kentucky down in Lexington and goes long. Davis gets it and could score. Yep, still a four-point play anyway. You, you end up with it. That Torbett made the second one. But Davis, again, offensive glass. He had seven against Duke, six against Kentucky, two in the early going here. May, good double down by Hill. May turn around, he's starting to get it going. Well, they're taking a chance right now in regard to trying to handle May off the bench with Namick. And that's just to go ahead and occupy some time. If he commits the fouls, it keeps Davis out of foul trouble. Davis over May. Tipped up by Bogracus. And Namick has it swatted away by Noel. Michigan State's getting on that glass, Jim. Thomas, not like Belton, is not going to take it. Williams wide open. How about that? He does not hit one in the last three games in the NCAA. He's 0 for 7. He's already hit a couple in this one. And 10 for the game. Torbett with a 3. Unable to match it. Michigan State with Gracchus. That's the third time he's kept it alive on the inside. Hill will drive on Scott at the open lane. Put back, yes. Again, they sweep the offensive glass. Michigan State just cleaning up on the rebounding. May has it stripped by Hill. And Davis gets it back over to him. Terrific job by Hill helping out. Corbett knows he doesn't have numbers, but how about leaving him alone for the shot? Underneath, Quentin Thomas. North Carolina May is coming down a floor slowly. Normally, he runs much better than that. Williams wide open again with Davis on him. Melvin Scott launching. And chase down. There's the long rebound you were talking about. Off of a release three. Yeah, when you take one from 22 feet out, and you don't make it, it's going to go long. May again short. And Michigan State just doing the job on the rebounds. Both ends of the floor. Chris Hill. Here's a big shot. He hits it. He has struggled with the three in the tournament mightily, but gets that one. And uh, just remember that as he ties it at 25. Jimmy was one for 17 prior to that time from the outside. May, again, thinks he can take Namick. It spins out. May's tired right now. I haven't seen him this tired in a long time. Look, he's getting beat down the floor. Corbin, baseline, lays it up. Roy Williams going to have to take a timeout. They've got a tired team on the floor right now. And Roy Williams yep. does just that. Seven unanswered for the Spartans. Jim, the key to this ball game so far, Michigan State, nine offensive rebounds, North Carolina two. With those nine rebounds, eight second chance points for Michigan State, just two for North Carolina, just beating them off the boards. Both teams have played man-to-man -man straight through. Working again, down low, May, and up, and too strong. And that last touch by State. Now that's the fourth person that's guarded May in this first half. Trannon, Naven, 
Now Delco, Raleigh, and Davis. Down, even if they give up some points. Now it's Delco, Raleigh on him on the inside, and he will be pushing, shoving, not worried about falling out. He's just going to keep that body on him and wear him down. You mentioned this, Delco Raleigh, number 50. And he's been saddled with a knee sprain and seen little action in the tournament. Average 10 minutes a game during the regular season. McCants. And Manuel. Oh, is that going to be his third? That's over it. the back on Jackie Manuel. Nysel did a good job, giving up probably about four or five inches on the play, just blocked out. I don't know if any coach in the country, and statistics will prove it, that teach blocking out and rebounding any better than Tom Izzo. So that's the last we'll see of Jackie Manuel, if you would expect this half. And Jim, the other thing is blocking out even by guards. Go to ncasports.com slash Pontiac and vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the tournament, $100,000 on the line. For the winning schools, you see they missed the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. There's now Davis is back inside on May, and he'll be pushing and shoving, and he's going to be fresh. Terry, and Sean Terry, and Alan Anderson's foot on the line. I think he was out of bounds and stepped in, Jim. Pretty nice call by the official right on top of it. Here you see Anderson, he's out of bounds and steps back in, and that's why it didn't count. What didn't count is his rebound. Marvin Williams, jumper. Too strong. Great and look rebound. how high Maurice Ager flying for that one. It's Brown driving, gets the bucket. We talked about their ability to finish. Here comes Felton. Nine unanswered for the Spartans. A real nice job by Michigan State stopping Felton's dribble before he can penetrate into the lane. Inside, Terry puts that one down, the assist to May. First time today that May has made them pay for the double down operation. Can Anderson take the freshman? He gives it up instead. Shannon Brown lost control, and he's tied up. Arrow is going the other way. It was a nine-point run by the Spartans. Wasn't broken until May gave up the pass to Terry. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer here in St. Louis. Illinois already has won today, and Michigan State's in front of the Tar Heels. Jim, 35% field goal shooting, but when you rebound the way Michigan State is, and you get six steals compared to one for North Carolina, that offsets it. Up two points in Michigan State at this point. Again, Michigan State doing a nice job altering on Felton and on May, different players, so they're always fresh. It'll be Davis on May now. Looking for the lob, and Anderson on the hold. That's a good high-low play. Very difficult to handle both May, May and Williams in there. Anderson just giving up too much size. His first. Team foul number six. So it'll inbound underneath with 3.28 to go in the half. The fans cheering over the Illinois section as Coach Weber walks by. Yeah, right behind the Michigan State bench. Like he says, it's very difficult to go to a restaurant up in Champaign to get a decent seat anymore. <laughs> Felt downtown. Yeah. Long rebound. And it's all Michigan State chasing it down. Three on one. Aker. Felt. Wow, he reached in beautifully and slapped it away. Yeah, remember Felton picked up that foul very early in the ball game and was hesitant to go for the block on a fast break attempt before but he's very good at getting that ball on the way up corner Brown three yes terrific job coming out from the solid screen inside Williams falling down and it's all Spartans Experience. Looking for the quick release. Experience of Anderson, yep. wide open. He wants it on the other side. Brown, and he gets both corners. Terrific job by Michigan State to hit ahead. Back, not, back not the back trips, two threes by Shannon Brown. Not good floor balance by North Carolina. His 
inside. Felton working hard to find an open seam. But look at Ager and Brown. They're breaking long and they're breaking wide, so they're open. There they turn the corner again. Ager gets it back out to the top. Brown, can he do it a third time? Nope, over the top. But Billy, you pointed it out. We've been talking about it, offensive rebounding. Shot missed, there's an opportunity to go over and make a block that's not there. And of course, nobody blocking out from the weak side. Torbert doing the job, Davis doing the job. And a missed free throw. Nine offensive rebounds for the Spartans who lead by six. And here you go again, Brown with his strength and quickness staying right with Felton. Felton doesn't play against many guys this big and strong. And out, tipped up and in. I think Jawan Williams. Williams. Yeah. He's now got 12. But again, look at Michigan State breaking oh, on it. Big play by Felton. Get a hand on it. Somehow Torbert lands it. And Davis on his back. Now back to the line for two more. No hustle by McCants. Roy Williams beside himself on the sideline. This is a loose ball here. McCants lackadaisically goes after it. Torbert beats him with the ball. Noel called for his first. America's number one comedy is heading for its own Final Four. Countdown begins for Raymond's Final Four new episodes right here on CBS. Davis hits the first. Had his career high 14 rebounds against Vermont, then came back with that big 20 points, 12 rebounds against uh, Duke. And in addition to that, fouling out Sheldon Williams in that big win, and then 15 points and 11 rebounds against Kentucky. This young guy has really stepped up in the paint for Michigan State. Hager down, you saw Hill come in. Anderson's also out, Namick's back in. Melvin Scott returns for North Carolina. And Jim, what made this play is the fact that Michigan State just wanted the ball more. And a few times they haven't stopped Felton quickly. Rod Williams, hottest deal with the ball so far, and it's Davis. One shot and done for North Carolina. Seven rebounds for Davis already. Torbett, baseliner, got He's hit on the elbow. Oh, Davis tried to slam it home. Hills come, Hills come out of the break, and Felton, left hand up followed up by Noel. It's the second one today, he's followed up. Noel had only one field goal in the first four games of the NCAAs, already with a couple of baskets in the first half. And that's North Carolina basketball there, pushing the ball up the floor, getting the break going. Timeout called. Tommy Izzo. Three starters sitting down. Last minute of the first half. Shannon Brown takes it to the other side of the rim. For two. He's now got ten. Picking up right where he left off in the regional. Kick. Torbert reset the 35. Wanting to go inside to Williams. With just 45 seconds to go, you would think that they would put their better shooters back in the game. Look how physical it's been at times inside. You'd think McCants would come in on that exchange to take this uh, last possession shot. Namick is back in the middle for State. Oh, it's Scott with the three. Not a, good, not a good decision. Wrong man on the floor. They can hold it for the last, but instead they go ahead, kick ahead, Anderson. Go. Namick was there to almost follow it up, just a little off on the timing. Well, that would have been some shot by Anderson. Trying to gauge it just right, but the heels hold it now. Nope. Noel going up and has it taken away. Jim, I thought North Carolina should have come a timeout, get their primary shooter, McCants, into the ball game, set up for the last second shot. Now they give Michigan State that opportunity sitting on a five-point lead. Or will it be more as they head to the locker room? Anderson dishes down low, and it's knocked out. Two tenths. They've got to do a tap play. So now look out there. You've got Brown, you've got Torbert, you've got Anderson. Brown is the guy you'd like on the tap play to get the screen because he can go up so high. See if they do it for him. No, it's Torbert. And the Spartans go to the locker room with the lead. They outscored the Tar Heels 18 to 8 over the final seven minutes. And it could be all Big Ten. And North Carolina has other ideas. Manuel's back out on the floor. Remember, he picked up three in that first half. Three fouls. He missed his defensive presence and his leadership. One of the seniors. Knights it. Looking 
for some help. Anderson, who did not make a shot from the floor in that first half. Walking that baseline. Brown with the three. Too strong. And it's Jawad Williams who had hefty numbers in that first half. Williams came out showing a lot of confidence that he had possessed in this tournament earlier. Good feed down low. Here he is. He had 12 in the first half. Comes up short. It's May with the lay-in. There are those hands. He was almost falling down as he was catching that ball. But again, North Carolina does not get back on defense. Ground wide open. It sets things up. Allen Anderson. Back out high to Brown. Can't trying to help the referee out a little bit. They just ignore him. Stolen. Stolen by and Jackie numbers. Manuel. Here comes May. Big numbers. May. Oh. Follow up to Pants. How about Brown authoring May's shot? That's the first time in this ball game we've seen May get down the floor for the potential of an offensive put back on a break. Pants now has 11, but that's his first basket since 10 minutes on the clock in the first half. A lot of screening for Davis inside. They get him the ball down low. Davis won that first half matchup inside. Brown on the wing. And that skids off the rim, and it's going to be North Carolina ball. Pretty good block out by Manuel, even with three fouls. Shannon Brown, back-to-back -back trips down the floor. He hit three from opposite corners. At 12 in the first half. Coming off a career-high 24 in the regional final. Torbert on Felton right now. Felton quicker than he is there again. That same lob, this time it's to Williams. And they come busting out of the locker room with the first six to take the lead. Good idea by Michigan State. Go right back inside of the man. It's been hot. Just make the play. Aker on the way up. He was setting up for the slam. Probably and a pretty good foul. Yep, can't second. Because Brown was going to stop that. There's that lob right over the top to Williams. Decent back screen by McCants. Let me correct that. That's only the first on McCants. And that was a good foul, though, Jim, for the simple reason that without question, that ball would have been flushed by Ager. But at least you put him on the foul line. But again, Michigan State, when they go to the foul line, terrific team. Ager, 81%. Their leading score on the season coming in by a total of three points over Allen Anderson. May. Not a good ball hammer, in trouble. That's a good catch by Williams. And the camps will try to take a nice piece of too big for him. Yep, push off, call on the freshman. And Knights will in real trouble there because McCants really sized you up. If you're too small, he'll go ahead and use that ball maneuver right in front and then just blow by. And it's the second on Knights. It was a quiet first half for the decorated Carolina freshman, Marvin Williams. Now it's McCants. Trannon defending, and McCants takes him. Takes him quickly. But again, look Here at this. Here they go. Ager and he's back to the line. That could be Manuel. I think that's number four on Manuel, but how about the job that Michigan State does breaking Ager and Brown down the sidelines before North Carolina picks up? Yep, number four on Jackie Manuel. Well, you better be ready for this bunch in transition. Oh, absolutely, and as I said before, they not only are quick, but this is what's changed a lot. Knights will get them the ball. They break out long and go wide, and then they can finish if they have that opportunity to turn the corner. Manuel has to come out with the four. David Noel in for him. Neitzel also sits, and it's Chris Hill into the lineup for the Spartans. Well, Manuel made all ACC defensive team, but Noel, as far as his athletic ability, can hang right with him. May There's that free throw shooting. Yep, you may have seen that stat go by a moment ago. Carolina has attempted one free throw in this game and missed it. That's it. Felt he'll launch it. He got it for the lead. Pretty good job by Noel turning the corner. Now there's what he can do better than Manuel. Much better offensive threat. Away from the ball as Trannon was posting up down low. They whistle Marvin Williams with the foul from behind. Freshman inexperience, Jim, because you know they're not going to go to Trannon inside in the low post, get him the ball offensively. Here's May sitting down. 
Jawad Williams comes in for him, Billy. Jim, the last game that you can think of that May had that he's played like this was against Wake Forest way back in January 15th, where he had nine points and nine rebounds. Chris Hill. Made one in the first half. Not this time, and it's Marvin Williams climbing high. Trailer is Jawad. Lays it up, gets the soft roll. He is something else here tonight. Senior having a terrific game in McDonald's All-American. He's gone through some rough times at North Carolina, but having a big game here. Hager, tough shot. Good hands by Davis. Davis with the slam again, able to keep possession. Up ahead, they try to beat them. It's transition. Oh, he had to walk. He did. Considering the score, you're up two. You don't need to make that pass. And no angle, and the ball thrown over the head. Williams did a terrific job, don't you think, Jim? Just hanging on before he walked. Melvin Scott back. McCants out. Roy Williams looking at this Michigan State depth and quickness decides he better go to his bench. He doesn't want a worn down team. Much of this North Carolina roster recruited by a man who's sitting on the Michigan State bench tonight. Davis on the baseline in trouble, turns it over. There's Coach Wojcik. Is those assistant who for four years was Matt Doherty's assistant. And a little uh, exchange here. Hey, wait a minute. Freshman says to the football player, don't give me that. <laughs> but you know, there's a trade. Look at this man. Takes it away from Felton. Hammers it home. How about that? Well, you don't see that that often. Well, a guy like Tran in that size taking it away from Felton. That was a terrific play, and how about getting minutes and quality deals out of guys off the bench? That was just a great, great play. Felton three. Felton now showing some signs. Now there's a case where Tran got picked. Should have stayed with a little bit longer on the hedge move. Teams are battling back and forth right now. Very important to get Davis back in the action down low. Cannon Brown looking for the tie. Got it. Scott goes underneath the screen. Well, this is some action out of the locker room these first five minutes. Well, Proviso East has one player in the final four. It looks like Brown wants to be right there, like his old teammate. D. Brown and Shannon Brown. And Jawad Williams. Can you believe he had only one double-figure scoring game in his last eight? But tonight, he has been the Carolina star with 18. And it's going the other way. They're going to call Davis down low. Positioning too forcefully. Heels have taken the lead. They were five down at halftime. Dean Smith, the incredible coach, the all-time winningest coach. But Jim, uh, doing some research on him a while back, he had 19 straight years where his team shot over 50%. And 16 of those 19 years, they shot over 70% from the foul line. We don't beat many clubs that can do that consistently. He was some coach. Yep, royalty here in the house tonight in St. Louis. May banks it in. May's father played for Dean Smith on the 76 U.S. Olympic team. And that was the start of the relationship that really led Sean May from Bloomington, Indiana, to go to Tar Heel country. McCants getting down, took that challenge. Nice job by Brown stepping out, nothing there. And McCants chases it down. North Carolina has hit its last eight. Make it nine. That's what you can't let North Carolina do if you're Michigan State, getting the open floor with Felton before you slow down his dribble. Davis out of the game. He's going to have to come back in with little or no rest. This tempo is just getting things out of control here for Michigan State now. Carolina taking advantage. And Good. Brown reaches in, and that is out of bounds, not a foul. It's going to the Tar Heels. Bar Hills with some uh, lobs. Jawad Williams, that was first half. Perry. And Williams again. Talked about all that great shooting under Dean Smith. Well, they've now hit their last nine from the floor in this one. Davis, a little rest on May. May goes right through him. Nothing there. Good job by Davis. 
Neitzel, here's a lot of the oh. And Ager unable to get it, was a little behind him. Pull up, three, front of the rim. Oh, the chance does not again go for the loose ball, and it costs him. Tie up arrow, but it's North Carolina ball. Might have been up too high on this one, was Aker, huh? He was looking down at that rim. I think he had to reach back a little too far. A lot of, there was a lot of oomph on that pass, too, Jim. Wasn't very soft. Tough one to catch when you're that high up in the air. But Ager and Brown show that they're as good a finishers as any college team has. What's been the biggest reason for this Carolina turnaround in the second half? Well, I think in the open court, Jim, when you don't slow down Felton, North Carolina really gets into their running game. It's a pretty good delay right here where they're cleaning the floor for May who could use the rest with all those guys that have been banging on him today. Coach Roy, 71% his team in this half. McCanson inside with Anderson, and he's so quick to off the floor. And that whistle, McCants angry, unable to convert with a chance for a three-point play. Thursday, Survivor. How can a tribe of two compete against a tribe of eight? It has a secret alliance formed between them. That's a whole new Survivor Thursday on CBS. Nowhere near as big, but it reminds you of Antoine Jameson, who was so quick off the floor. And you remember back in the 1998 when, when North Carolina was the number one seed and Michigan State was a four in Greensboro. And that was with Jamison and Carter beat this Michigan State club and went on to the Final Four. From then on, though, Tom Izzo took three straight teams yep. to that Final Four. Yep, they wouldn't lose uh, before going to a Final Four for a long time. 99-2000 was the championship that year. And 0-1. We'll see if Knights can get some things started again. They did well when they got that ball into Davis. And there he is. In and over May, deep shot. Kicked around to Aker. Oh, oh wow. block, a block by Chawad Williams. But again, Michigan State getting those second chance opportunities. Aker, and it's Williams on the box out. Up ahead, Noel slips a bit, tries to save it, and right to Chawad Williams, who's everywhere tonight. Seven point run by the Tar Heel. Looking for more. McCants guns it down. Penetration and kick out. But over 30,000 on hand, and it's well deserving, in my mind, after seeing 20 of them, to come back again far sooner than from 1978 to 2005, but wait the last time. Hill, important three, and it dips down and out. I don't know if that's the shot you want coming out of a timeout. Here comes Felton. And May to the line. And Felton again. Now what's happening to Michigan State? They're not stopping him as he crosses half court. And when you turn him loose, he'll make plays. NCAA March Madness On Demand gives you total access to the men's tournament. Replay all the games in the video archive, and you can get live team press conferences, game highlights, and more only at NCAAsports.com or CSTV.com. Hill with his first, and May to shoot a pair. And Jim, in that first half, remember how May seemed to be extremely tired with all that banging on four different players playing on him. It looks like he's gotten his second win now getting up and down the floor, which is something Felton really likes because he likes his great hands to be on the end of those passes in the lane. This game was tied at 49. And now 12 unanswered for North Carolina. Now you've got Brown and Ager and Davis. You want to see if Brown and Ager can get back into this ball game a little bit with some touches here instead of Hill. They missed their last six from the field. No doubling down here on Davis. Corbett puts up the three, and the senior, shot. huge shot. Marvin Williams wants it inside. Torbett's just holding him. Good action by the freshman trying to get loose. Yep, Torbett when he took over? Well, he had a pretty decent nucleus, but what he had to do is to change the mindset of the guys that he inherited, and he really did a good job. That first year at North Carolina, lob pass, Williams wide open. Defended by Trannon and May 
puts it back. And now North Carolina starting to get on the deep, the offensive glass with some second chance points. Trannon down inside. Michigan State will not look for him. Corbett hit a three just a short while ago. And this one pulled down by Marvin Williams. May wanting that ball inside. A little bit of push by Davis. May recovers nicely. May head to the line. He is fired up. And he wants that ball, Jim, which is a sign of a kind of player you want to get that ball to. Tomorrow in 60 minutes, Pope John Paul II, his impact on the U.S., how it'll last a lot longer than many might think. The story is tomorrow in 60 minutes. Trannon picking up his third and May for a pair. And Jim, you start talking about fathers and sons. We have Sean and Scott May made it to the Final Four. Mike and Henry Bibby. Of course, both of those guys were on victorious teams. Well, and then you have you Marcus go, Johnson and Chris. Before you go too far, don't forget about Sean's brother, Scott that's Jr. Right, played with him. That, so that's the first time that the fathers had two kids make yeah, it to the he Final was on Four. The, and he had himself. Yeah, exactly. two roster. Yep. The so brothers. You've got some that have been able to win, both father and son. We mentioned Bibby's. Arizona and Bibby's UCLA that were able to win the national championship each. North Carolina now picking up way out in their man-to-man. -man. And Anderson could be a big key if the Spartans are to find a way to come back here in this one. Nice set play. Good step back by Ager. Tough shot. Tough shot is right. Yep. And again, it's May. Picked off by Hill. Nice recovery by Hill with the anticipation. McCants probably should have come to get the ball. Davis with the jumper. And it's all Carolina underneath with Felton. Now here's Felton doing what Magic Johnson used to do back in 79. Take the ball from a rebound position, take it up the floor and create his own fast break. Two-point basket, Billy, gives North Carolina the 15-point bulge. Largest of the night. An 18-3 stretch. In the opening round against Iowa State where they got on that terrific run offensively, Anderson, five, five count, second yep. count, good defense by North Carolina. And Roy Williams with this lead gets a chance to rest May. And Felton doesn't look like he wants any rest. Boy, he has got a determined look on his face. It had to hurt some of the Spartan fans at home when they heard you compare Felton. To Magic Johnson because he's hitting shots and well what Magic Johnson was so effective at is grabbing rebounds off the defensive end in that matchup zone that Judd Heathcote used and then taking it all the way with the dribble. Nice play by Anderson on the defense. Yep, defensive Jim. They come out with it. Hill looks ahead. Got Ager on the wing. That Davis inside for the easy lay-in. Good job by Michigan State. And I hope people weren't thinking, I'm thinking Felton is as good as Magic Johnson. But there he <laughs> that was a little magical. <laughs> You've got to stop his dribble out front. Anderson down low. Kicks it over to the other side. And a foul. Did this tempo in the second half just get things out of control for Michigan State? Away from him. As you see, Jawad Williams in his game, too. Sharp in the first half. And big baskets to begin the second as well. Well, Jim, you know if a team on the course of the year has been the number one scoring team in the country, it means they want to get up and down the floor. Do you want to play their game or do you want to play your game? Obviously, a little bit more control is beneficial for Michigan State. You let this team turn loose, and it could be a problem. Neitzel and Trannon for Michigan State. May and Melvin Scott. As Marvin Williams heads out, McCants as well. As an example, you go back to the course of the year. They scored 106 against Iowa, 91 against Kentucky, 91 against Georgia Tech. Those are the kind of games where they want to get in that flow, running up and down the floor with this deep team of theirs. Ager out, Torbett in. Time is all trying to get some fresh players defensively. May had that little rest, training on him inside. I bet you Felton lets him touch the ball. There he is. Nice double.
Double down, good kick out. Right back to May, finds a man inside. It's Noel and his last touch. Now they're gonna call a foul on Shannon Brown. You can't know, believe it. Noel went in for Manuel, Jim, and I said there won't be much of a fall off there. I realize that Manuel was all conference defensive player, but Noel has got good hands, strong, and maybe even a superior athlete. It's a one and one for Noel. Grew up just a few miles from the Duke University campus in Durham. And over the back call on Carolina. It's going to be on Williams. You said it earlier. When you say Williams on North Carolina, you know, you have to kind of look around. You talk at Jawad, you talk at Marvin, you talk at Roy. <laughs> that is on, uh, actually on May. They call it on May, and that's two well, on the Carolina Center. Uh, he picked up one early in the ball game. And then Brown. Look and it's Noel. Noel. That's what I was talking about. Yep. Nice job pushing him out. Noel understanding what's happening there on the double downs. Just as we saw Terry break after throwing the ball to May. Smart play by Noel to do likewise. Third foul on Anderson. And again, Illinois. 15 point winner earlier tonight. 15 point final margin was what in fact was the largest margin of the game. They held Francisco Garcia to only four points. They shot 63% in that second half. They got 20 from Powell, 20 from Luther Head as they advance. Air ball by Noel, only a 58% free throw shooter, so it was probably a pretty good foul on the part of Michigan State. One more. That's three straight by Noel and misses. Gives Michigan State a little opening here. Spartans need to take advantage. Just coming off an empty trip. Anderson rejected by Jawad. Over to Shannon Brown and tipped up Torbert. We have a look at Raymond Felton. Michigan State does a nice job getting back down floor. Felton had eyes for the fast break. Nothing there. That sequence sends Davis to the scores table to check in. Follow up, no, Noel. And May again struggling a little bit, coming back down court. Not a good pass. What a catch, though. Corbin lays it up and in. Yeah. Shannon Brown just cut that one and came back down. Keep it alive. A little opening here for Michigan State. They've got it to 11. Hager's also going to come back in. Hager and Davis. Juwan Williams, well, he's just not missing. That's a tough shot to make, too. You're going right at the pass, and normally your momentum takes your eye off that basket, and you shoot it long. Wow, what nice kind of shot. And long board to Felton. They've got the four on two. Underneath, dump it over to May. And he lays it in for the easy basket. Right back to 15, matching the largest lead of the game. Now Michigan State looks tired, and Tom Izzo's got to take a time out of his own, get some fresh troops in there. He's got a freshman out there that took a shot that was unnecessary. When you're down like this, they've got to get that ball inside to Davis. They've got to let Brown and Ager be guys that really get some touches to score. They've got Trannon out in the ball game, Hill out in the game back now. Neitzel sits down. It makes sense. To try to stay solid, get that ball inside some. Hill on the drive and hacked on the outside by Felton. He was their leading scorer and obviously the guy that led them to great success in years that followed. Almost a turnover that time by Trannon. Looking for Davis, back out to Hill, step back three. And it's McCants with it. And Hill just unable. We're talking about a guy that was one of the premier outside shooters in the country prior to this year. Yep, fifth holds all the, time. Yeah, he holds the record at Michigan State with 10 of 18 threes that he had against Syracuse. He used to be just a great perimeter shooter. That's fifth all time, uh, talking about Hill, in Big Ten Conference plays. One for six tonight. Yeah, and he's the number two career three-point shooter behind Sean Respite at Michigan State. Ager, and there's the ball. It's a charge. Finally, Emmanuel gets a foul going the other way. He picked up four earlier. 
Pretty good defense on his part. Sean May returns. And Williams out. J Jawad Williams. Jawad Williams, who was really struggling, had a hip flexor problem, but uh, really came up big in this ball game today, particularly when North Carolina was struggling. That hip flexor problem you mentioned happened in the ACC tournament against Clemson. And he has struggled until tonight. Williams so strong inside, but nothing there. Davis still battling. Somehow, Jack Emanuel has it. Comes out of the pack. Good job by Felton. Pull things back out. Get something good here. Everybody doing 360 spins. <laughs> and that's knocked out by Maurice Ager. And here comes uh, Spartans, Kelvin Turbin. Another senior coming in for Hill. And with five minutes and uh, roughly 30 seconds to go up your North Carolina, you've got to now start being a little bit more patient, take good shots here. You don't want to give any opening whatsoever for Michigan State. Dance, looking for help. Outside it goes with May. Jumper, and May a different man in the second half. Seems a lot fresher, doesn't he, Jim? It really does. Yep. You, you spotted that fatigue issue early. Well, sometimes you, you just lose your wind early, but I thought Izzo did a fine job in that first half. Look at Davis taking it to him. Too strong, and May and Davis battle tie up. It goes to the Spartans. Uh, Davis really showing some energy out here right now. Young man who's had a terrific run here late in the year. May with 18 in the game, 14 of them coming in this half. Five minutes to go. Good screen, and there's a hold, and Manuel will sit down. Five fouls. He got four quick ones in that first half. Roy Williams going to give him a hand. That brings Noel back in. Pretty good trade off for North Carolina. Well, Manuel, one of the seniors, one of the seniors at Carolina who has lived through so much that 8 and 20 freshman year, an NIT second season, out in the second round last year to Texas in the NCAAs, and now just five minutes away from a championship game appearance. McCants walked down the sideline and almost to hide down the corner, and Torbett saw him out of the corner of his eye and ran down here to stay with him. McCants thought he was going to sneak one in. Pretty clever move in his part, and nice job by Torbett to spot him. It's the eighth free throw made in this half by Ager, but still 15 down. They're going to have to pull off an Illinois-like comeback. How about a Louisville-type comeback, any kind of comeback? Yep. That's not the kind of shot if you're North Carolina you want. You want to occupy some clock here, make them play May. Bob. Brandon, now Brown on the floor, no whistle. Felton up ahead, Noel gives it up. McCann soars, and Trannon hustles oh, down to get the defensive State. rebound. How about Trover? Ager called for it, gets it underneath, pinned, and it'll be Michigan State ball. Well, we are seeing some blocks against fast-breaking opportunities by guys that are great finishers. McCants can finish. Boy, what a block by Williams. Elvin Scott returns. Bograk is in for Michigan State. Well, this is a nice move, I think, here by Roy Williams. He's going to go with two guards out on the floor, probably to get a little better ball handling. And force Michigan State to really have to play hard in the half-court defense. They need a three. Ager Got gets it. it for him. Still a dozen down. 4-16 to play. And it in inside, and a three-point opportunity for the Tar Heel. Great creation by May on that place. Davis was right there to block that shot. North Carolina in this half, they're shooting. Felton hit a couple of long-range shots. Jawad Williams hot throughout. But May now with 20 on the game, 16 and a half. Very quiet first half by this young man, but uh, he has picked it up. Got the great hands, worked so hard to get his body in condition to be the kind of player he is. There he is hustling back down court. 
North Carolina not shooting free throws that well, Jim. This is the kind of situation you can really build on that lead. Ager hit one a minute ago. This Tough one shot. really deep. Oh! And again, Maurice Ager on a step back three. Eleven's the margin. Scott lobs it in. And Shrannon helped. That one might have bounced. They thought off his foot. It wasn't seen that way by everyone, so it'll be North Carolina ball up 11. 27 seconds on the clock. On the shot clock, 3.38 to go. And North Carolina now has to start playing smart like we saw Illinois play in the first game where they just made it impossible for Louisville to come back. When there are comebacks, the team that gives up the lead sometimes allows the comeback. In and look at Davis's hustle. It'll still go back to the Tar Heels with 17 on the shot clock. Now you can't fault Davis at all, Jim, down this stretch. He has played so hard both ends of the floor. And hasn't gotten the rest much in this second half. First half, he was able to take some time off because he never had to go head to head with May. There's 14 rebounds, Billy, tying a career high. Get inside, they go, another lob that delivers. May again. Felton wanted to have that one. Hager, it's been hot. Yep. Defended this time, though. Scott gets it out of there, squats wow. it out. Another lob. Marvin Williams wow. turn. You can see that coming, and this is what you don't want to have happen if you're Michigan State. You turn the team, the number one scoring team in the country, loose in this regard, and it's going to cost you. Come on, Marvin. Williams at one end, and then Maurice Ager at the other, they're calling it a two. There's the main dunk. Marvin Williams got the next one. That ball was beautifully thrown by McCants, too, Jim. Nice, soft, put it up there so hands could just put it away. Speaking of identical scores, this is the score by which Illinois beat Michigan State in their one matchup this year. And North Carolina's moving in on an Illinois matchup right now. They played uh, Michigan State, the common opponent here, to an identical score at the moment. And you look at front court scoring and the advantage to the Tar Heels in the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Complete tournament coverage, CBS Sports Line. And, and Jim, you know, the guy you really want to credit, I realize that that is a substantial difference, but the guy you really want to credit even more than me, I think, is Williams. Claude Williams today, when North Carolina needed him the most, really stepped up in that first half. And here's Scott, who hit two key foul shots. Bill comes back for Bo Rackus. Yeah, I agree, Billy. As big as May has been in this half, that first half by Jawad Williams, and even in uh, portions in the early going in this half, Jawad was carrying him. Yep. And now you've got Ager, the guy that wants that ball. Looks like he wants to take the shot. He's got to help out on him a little bit. The last 10 points on the board by the Spartans have come by way of Ager. But North Carolina is marching through another Big Ten team tonight. It was Wisconsin in the regional final. Michigan State here tonight. And we'll have another wait for them on Monday night, it appears, because they're just two minutes away from sealing it. Well, we talked about them facing each other in 1957 in a Final Four. North Carolina came away with a triple overtime win there, and it looks like they'll come away with a win here as well. Four on the shot clock, and Felton. You get Williams. Williams not oh. oh, they say it's off of Michigan State. I didn't see it that way. We've had four teams play today, and all four teams, there's only been 48 teams in the history of college basketball that have had four players with 1,000 points, and four of them played on this court today. Unbelievable. Pretty amazing when yep. you think about that. That's in the history of the game. That's right. Four of the 48, all of them are here. That's four, right. All four of them here are and able that, to be blessed with 4,000-point scores. You know Melvin what? Scott to the line. What that talks about is unselfish play, guys who obviously enjoy playing with each other, and guys willing to give up the ball. Well, Tom Izzo said his team was void of any superstars, but it was also a team that was ego-free. They had four games in the tournament before this one, four different leading scores in those games. Tom Izzo 
Joining Fred Taylor, the old Ohio State coach, is the only two to take four teams to the Final Four in their first 10 years. It'll be an amazing accomplishment. Reach around on Williams, Marvin Williams. And of course, uh, Fred Taylor was able to take those teams led by Jerry Lucas, John Havlicek, the guy who hasn't had too bad a coaching career in the NCAA. Bob Knight played on those teams. Three straight years, Ohio State with Fred Taylor went to the Final Four winning in their sophomore year and then losing to Cincinnati in their junior and senior years. Davis for an end of a one and one. Thursday night they had the uh, salute presentation. All four teams were on hand, all the players, the coaches, and Coach Izzo was asked about all that talk on the selection night when he's told his team they had a hunch that we were going to be born on a run. He says, I have no doubt we're going to have a run. But he did admit, I didn't expect that run was going to take us all the way to St. Louis. It's been a hugely successful NCAA tournament, even though it's going to end earlier than they had hoped for this week. Five seed making it all the way to the Final Four. North Carolina and Illinois will be the championship matchup. It's the matchup the college basketball fans have been clamoring for for at least two months. Yeah, and go back to January. Marvin Williams with the three. And Ager able to sky for the rebound. Final minute. Ager in the paint. Nice job getting inside there. And Williams wisely pulls the ball back. Everybody looks for Felton. What do you think if North Carolina is able to beat the third place team from the Big Ten, the second place team from the Big Ten, and then Monday night beat Illinois, they would not only win the Big Ten tournament championship, but the NCAA championship. They'd be the Big Ten champs, in a way, and the national champs. And how about Seth Davis? What did he lecture everybody at halftime? He said this tempo was going to cost him. If Absolutely. They, if they you try to play with North Carolina this way, he was all over Yes, it. he was. He issued a warning at halftime. Yes, he did. And in fact, that did do him in. And here come all the subs. They'll take the starters out, and we'll see him again on Monday night. That should be quite a game. And as you said, Jim, I, I would say since uh, Wake Forest got knocked off by Illinois, you know, early in when Illinois just destroyed Wake Forest at their place, and uh, North Carolina, even though they struggled a little bit, they lost to Wake Forest, I think people were saying, you know, these are the two best teams in the country, and here they earn their way to play each other on Monday night. It's the way it ought to be. Well, you said that on Selection Sunday. You said, I think that those two teams, Illinois and North Carolina, are the two best. There are a bunch of teams that are just a little bit behind them. But these two that ended up in the uh, final AP poll, 1-2, Illinois 1, North Carolina 2, will play for the championship. Ah, nice. And there was what I talked about on selfish play. Torbert, the senior. Giving up the ball to a guy who had a better shot. Well, Drackers wanted a foul there and didn't get the call. That's Holly with the three. And Davis still working for everything. Trevor, a man that so much was expected of when he came to Michigan State, accepted his role as a sub. Great team player. Had a fine career. Amo keeps it alive out to Davis. Holly pours it, pulls it down. And North Carolina is in the championship matchup with Illinois. A resounding second half performance by the Tar Heels. 21 point turnaround in all in the second half. Roy Williams will play for that elusive championship on Monday night. Well, he's won 39 NCAA tournament games and that's the most anybody's ever won who has not yet won a championship.